Okay, hello. Yes, we are here on day seven of the advent of code 2020. Advent of Code is a little programming puzzle competition that happens each year from December 1st through December 25th which a puzzle with a puzzle each day. Uh, I am someone who has been programming computers my almost entire life. I want to show people what it's like to be a real computer programmer, uh, how silly it can be sometimes by solving these puzzles completely live streaming and then if the video comes out nicely record it and put it up on youtube uh i can't think of anything else to say right now uh except let's try to solve day seven here we go hopefully this goes as smoothly as it did yesterday all right let's switch it up uh day seven we land at handy haversax all right we land at the regional airport in time for our next flight. Good job on day six. In fact, it looks like you have time to grab some food. All flights are currently delayed in issues in luggage processing. Due to recent aviation regulations, many rules your puzzle input are being enforced about bags and their contents. Bags must be color-coded and must contain specific quantities of other color-coded bags. All right, hold on. So bags must be color coded. So like a green bag and it has to contain quantities of other color coded bags. So a green might contain two whites and a red or something like that. Right. Apparently no one responsible for these regulations considered how long they would take to enforce. For example, considering the following rules, light red bags contain one bright red, uh oh, two muted yellow bags. Dark orange contains three bright white, four muted yellow. Oh boy. Bright white bags contain one shiny gold bag. So it's always adjective color. Um, and they always contain like this. All right. So a number adjective color. Number adjective color with a comma. All right. So we'll do a little bit of parsing on that. That'll probably take us a little bit to do that. To make some sort of data structure for the rules. Um, okay. Okay. Oh, faded blue bags contain no other. So here, this isn't a number. This is now a, a, a no. Um, so that's another possible thing. Right? Okay. Um, these rules. Uh, oh, I get. I guess. I guess. Really, this whole this whole thing is the identifier, right? Um, but I imagine in part two, they might make us split up this from this, right? We could like use this whole thing as the identifier. Um, but I feel like in part two, they'll make us split it up. Anyway, we'll see about that. Um, I have some ideas on how to handle that anyway. The Also, I can already feel like this one's going to take a little bit longer. <laughs> Even disregarding bugs that are off by one or anything like that. This problem, I think, is actually a harder problem. All right, they specify the contents for nine bag types. Every faded blue bag is empty. Every vibrant blum bag contains 11 bags. I see. And so on. Cool. You have a shiny gold bag. If you wanted to carry in it at least one other bag, how many different bag colors would be valid for the outermost bag? How many colors can eventually contain at least one shiny gold bag? Ooh, this is a little more tricky than I thought. Okay. So here, shiny gold bags, right? Okay, well, they contain uh, olive and plum. Um, muted yellow can contain shiny gold. Bright white can contain shiny gold, right? What can contain muted yellow? This one and this one. What can contain bright white? This one and this one. What can contain dark orange or light red? Anything? No. So those are the ones that can contain at least one shiny gold. All right. 
At least on how many different kind of, in the above rules, the following options are available. A bright white bag, which can hold your shiny bag directly. A muted yellow, hold the shiny bag directly, plus some other bags. A dark orange, which can hold your bright white and muted yellow, either of which could then hold your shiny. Yep. All right, I was right. In this example, the number of bag colors that can eventually contain at least one shiny gold is four. How many bag colors can eventually contain at least a shiny gold bag? The list of rules... Oh, it has to be shiny gold. The list of rules is quite long. Make sure you get all of it. Let's look at the puzzle input first. It's a biggin. It's a biggin. It's a biggin. Um, dim olive bags contain no other bags. So anything that contains no other bags can't possibly contain the shiny gold bag. So we can disregard them for part two, for part one. You know they're going to come into play in part two. That's just how it is. But I can't, without knowing part two, this one is going to be harder to anticipate. Um, and and defend. usually I defensively code and build a more abstract uh, software that can handle any theoretical part two. But here, part one will be difficult to solve abstractly without in a way that will also solve part two without already knowing part two. Okay, let's save our puzzle input. Oh, let's go into that directory, move our input to input.txt, uh, and let's copy yesterday's example, yesterday's uh, uh, code. And this is going to be called um, handy. Let's just call it handy haversacks.py. Okay. We are going to be deleting a lot of this code. Oh, yesterday was a small one. Today is going to be much bigger. Okay, here we go. All right, so we have to parse these inputs first. Right, let's open our input file here. Um, so it's something, something bags contain, right? So it's always going to be something, something, the word bags, followed by the word contain. Let's find some of the nuns. Yeah, it's always going to be something, something, Bags contain. So um, we can use a regex here, right? So the regex will be um, uh, uh, it's going to be adjective color bags. So adjective space color space bags contain followed by a um it could be no other bags right so it could be no other bags or it could be a repeat Um, or it could be a repeated comma separated, but the last one's a period, right? Um, so period or comma, basically. Uh, okay. So I think we can just do, do period or comma. So it's number, adjective, color bag number adjective color bag so or all right so it contains no other bags what do you need to put in or uh, it contains number adjective color bag well 
quantity adjective color bag followed by a comma or a period. I think mean, we need to escape these. Right. Regex escape comma. Oops. Comma. It's Java, but whatever. Um Yeah, I think we need to I think that'll work. Skip color bag, but then that's repeated at least once. I think this is correct regular expression. Adjective color bags contain no other bags. Quantity adjective color bag repeated plus at least once, right? One more parenthesis to close out the There you go. Oh. With open. All right, hold on. Uh parsed lines. Parsed rules. Uh Let's look at our code from yesterday. There we go. Or line, uh, parsed, parsed rules dot append something. We'll get that something soon. Uh, not right now. Turn parsed rules. All right, let's do some Googling. Oh. Bar bag regex is never used. Yeah, it's going to be used real soon. So uh, we're going to, I've just got to remember. First, we, I know we got to import RE because that's the Python regular expression library. Let's see. Python regex extract. Uh, I think it's like dot groups or something. Uh, yeah, it's like group, see, yeah, group something. RE dot search, right? The pattern, then the string. Um, Yep. Pattern, then the string, and then we can do dot group. Okay, so um, we actually need to do these. So the adjective is, um, they're all going to be lowercase words, except for the number, which is going to be digits. So lowercase words is a back W, right, I think. Let's see. Python regex hw. Uh, regular expression operation. Or lowercase character. Actually, it'll only be, uh, we don't need to do that. We can do a to z plus. a to z plus. Bags contain a quantity. So quantity is going to be a single digit. Is it always a single digit or can it be many? It Can it be a double digit? Two, four, five, two. You see any double digits? I think they're all single digits. I think they're all single digits throughout the whole file. Yep, I think so. Uh, let's make see if it's written in the rules here. Digit? Doesn't say, but I didn't see any. So I'm going to just go with the single digit for now. Uh, so the adjective is an A to Z plus, and the color is an A to uh, Z plus. Okay. Yep. Okay, so then it's the function to do this was uh, dot search. Uh, the... Uh, the uh, I guess the parsed rule equals re dot search and it's going to be the pattern first the bag uh, the bag regex and then the line cool let's just do one here and let's run it just to test let's get this regex right first that's our step one that didn't do anything uh, it's because um, why is it? 
Because we're not calling anything, that's why. Um... There we go. We got it. Cool. All right. Parsed rule. Uh, that didn't do anything. Der parsed rule. Nothing. Re dot search. Oh dot. Re dot search something something dot group. All right. Hold on. None type. Does that mean the regex is non-matching? Let's, uh, okay. The regex should match every line, so we got to work on that. Okay, so the bag regex. Cool. The line. Mirrored silver bags. Oh, contain. Gray bags, period. Okay. Um, let's use a tool online to test our regex. Python regex tester. Here's one. Your expression. And then your test string. The mirrored silver bags with the period. Tur oh, wrong one. That's not what I wanted to copy. That's not it. Come on. Let's copy and paste it from here. Let's just pick one. Got one. Okay. Result, no matches. Cool. All right. So it's A to Z plus space. A to Z plus, uh, space bags, contain. All right, let's see if we, um, let's just do this, dot star, uh, dollar. All right, so that matches, and we've got dull bronze. Cool, so that part works. Okay, space, uh, backslash D. Cool, we've got the number. Uh, another uh, A to Z plus. That's going to get us the dull. Another A to Z plus. Okay, uh, bags. Right. Um, so the example here, uh, and then that's repeated. Um, and it, uh, oh, followed by a, um, either a comma or a period. And then this whole thing. is repeated no matches okay um four dull indigo bags four dull indigo okay so that part worked um No, so that's something's throwing us off with the period here, um, and it's not repeating the whole section because we're not collecting the two dim lavender bags. Bags, immediately followed by a comma or period. All right, so we need uh, Python match regex or period uh, match comma or period regex. Um, 
comma period. Oh, you can just do this. Oh, that will allow inputs like dot, 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 maybe. They're just putting comma and period unescaped in that example, uh, which is what I'm doing as well. Period plus as many times as. See, that's why I don't know why there's no matches on this. Right, it's not repeating this uh, whole section here, even though I put a plus on it. Uh, digit, you can do like zero through nine, maybe. That's the same. Okay. Comma or a period. No. Oh, followed by a space. Um, it's either a comma and a space or a period. That's why. It's not just a comma. Uh, so we need to do either a comma and a space or a period. Um, regex or... <laughs> Is there a, a different way to do it? I don't have to put in a... more parentheses here, but I guess we might have to. It's either a comma space or a period. There it is. Two dim lavender, two dim lavender, period. But it's not, ca um, it's not capturing in a loop. Right? It's not capturing the previous one. The if we got the two dim lavender bags, now we lost our indigo bags. Um Python regex parse repeated string. Matched groups. Is that what we're not doing right? Find all. Hmm. Parsing string with repeating pattern. We got some jerk answers on the internet. Did you know you have access to tutorials? That person should be banned. All right. That's not what we want either. RE module doesn't support repeated captures. Regex supports it. Um, so that's our problem right there. Dot captures. So this is why we're failing. Our library just doesn't work for this purpose. We need to use something different. Okay. Oh, they're splitting, right? They're doing the grouping and then they're splitting. That's okay. I guess we can do that, actually. That's not the worst idea um, to just capture. It does make it actually a little bit more readable uh, when you think about it. So let's, um, we'll basically 
capture this part, right, up to the contain, and then take this, uh, split it on comma space, right, remove the period, and then parse each one separately, right? It's not as fancy, but it's going to work. So, so we'll just do um, bags uh, contain, right, the rest, right? So we'll go back here. Contain space dot star. There you go. So now we've got dull bronze, right? And then we've got everything it contains in another string that we can handle later. Cool. Uh, so we'll make sure that this is exactly what we're using here. So the first, uh, the outer regex, outer regex. Okay. Um, so then in the outer regex, we're going to call dot groups. So the outer regex. Uh, I think the parsed rules is going to end up being a dictionary, actually. Um, OK, so in the outer regex on the line, uh, dot groups. And let's just run this again. Okay, and our parsed uh, rule, parsed rule, terrific. So parsed rule zero is going to be adjective. Parsed rule one is going to be color, right? And parsed rule two is going to be the rest, right? So we will say um, uh, our... Uh, Outer bag equals, right, uh, parsed rule zero, parsed rule one. And then we're going to parse the inner bag like this. So inner string equals uh, parsed rule two. And now we're going to parse the inner, the inner regex. So the inner... Uh, oh, we're going to split this inner string, right? So inner, inner bag strings equals inner string dot split on comma space. Outer bag is never used. Print outer bag. Inner bag strings. It's never used. OK. Let's try it again. OK, outer bag, mirrored silver, inner bag strings, inner, uh, inner bag strings. Oh, there's only one inner bag string on this one. Uh, and it includes a period that we have to remove. We can actually just um, remove the period first. So as a Python remove char from string, we can just rem throw it out, right? Five ways to remove a character from a string in Python. Uh, dot replace might do that. Oh, we can just chop off the last character, actually. We can just say uh, inner string, right? So if we have, the, we have this uh, inner bag, strings zero right if we just do zero colon negative one that chops off the period so inner string zero colon negative one and that that throws the period away and we split on the comma and the space inner bag strings terrific let's continue wow um Ah, this is why. Continue. Inner bag strings. Yep. Five bright purple, one pale black, four muted line. Begs. Okay, so then 
Oh, is bag and bags being mixed up, plural and non-plural? Let's check our input. Okay, so it's always bags on the first one. It's always bags on the first one, right? But on the second one, it, it could be one bag if it's a one. Okay, that's not a big deal. So we're just going to get our inner regex is going to be, let's, let's use our tool again. Okay, so let's get some examples. This paste is really not cooperating. Five bright, five bright purple bags. One pale black bag. Five muted lime bags. Cool. So this one's going to be um, a number followed by a adjective. Oh, the adjective is going to be A to Z plus followed by the color, which is another A to Z plus followed by bag with an optional S, S question mark, dollar. No matches. Multi-line. Hey, hey, there we go. Multi-line did it. Five bright purple, one pale black, five muted lime. Much easier than trying to do it all in one go. Terrific. So now we have our inner regex. Um, so we've got our outer bag, right? And now we're going to do our inner bags. Cool. Um, inner bag strings, great. We're going to probably do a recursion um, once we're, we're done with this parsing part. Uh, to find the answer. It's going to be a recursion to go outwards. Um, so yeah. Anyway, let me think for a second. Uh, we're going to make our inner bags list. Like this. Uh, for um, bag in inner bag string and inner bag strings, you're going to do re.search uh, inner regex on the inner bag string dot groups uh, parsed bag. And then we are going to do inner bags dot append And we're going to make another tuple here. And this tuple is going to contain um, quantity. I guess we can put the quantity last, right? I just, I just want to put the quantity last because I just feel like that's right. So parsed bag zero. Actually, we can just do... Is it already a tuple? Is it already a tuple? Let's see. Um, parsed bag. It's already, it's already there. Um, we can just do, uh, Inner bags equals parsed bag. Is this already a tuple up here also? Yeah, outer bag is already. We don't need that. There we go. Yeah.
Oh, wait, no, it's not because of the parsed rule two also existing. That's why we're taking, we're, got, we're, we're but down here. Here we're using only part of the tuple, zero and one, and we're putting two somewhere else. But here we're bringing in the whole tuple, right? So we can just do inner bags.append. This will, we can just do this. Um, okay. And we're still in the four line. Okay, cool. And so after we've got that, we can just do uh, parsed rules, outer bag equals inner bags. Terrific. Let's try that. Okay, let's check our um, parsed rules. All right, yeah, the mirrored silver contains four wavy gray. All right, continue. Let's check our parsed rules again. All right, the, mirror the mirrored silver contains four wavy gray. The clear tan contains five bright purple, one pale black, and five muted lime. Let's check the input file. Wrong input file. Seven input file. There we go. The mirrored silver contains four wavy gray. The clear tan contains five bright purple, one pale black, five muted lime. I think we have parsed this to my satisfaction. All right, that is part. Uh, <laughs> we're not done with part one yet. Um, but that's the first hurdle for part one. The next is to actually solve our problem. So we've got our um, rules, right? So now we need to uh, find containing a bag. And what we want is we want to pass in the tuple, right? So bag type. Uh, and then we've got you know, the bag type is going to be in the form of, you know, um, it has to be adjective color, right? It has to be the tuple. We're searching for the tuple here. Um, okay. I think we also got to blow away the quantities on this, right? Somehow. I'm figure out the easiest way to do this with and without the quantities because they're sort of getting in the way a little bit. Um, so I think for now, I'm actually going to... Um, make two. With parsed rules without quantities. Here we go. No quantity inner bags. Okay, so we're going to do that. And then the no quantity So there's the parsed inner bag. Right, inner bags can just append parsed inner bag because that's right. But the no quantity inner bags uh, will be getting the parsed inner bag parts one and two, but not zero because zero is the quantity. Okay, and then uh, parsed rules outer bag equals inner bags. Uh, parsed rules without quantities uh, outer bag will equal the no quantity inner bags and then we are going to return the 
um, parsed rules and parsed rules without quantities. Parsed rules, parsed rules without quantities. And then down here, let's get that out of there for now. Down here, we're going to say rules and rules no quantity. Print rules. Let's just put the uh, breakpoint here. Remove this one. Rules no quantity. Expected two blank lines. OK, great. So I'll run this. Didn't work. Append takes exactly one argument to given. Append, ah. There we are. None type is no attribute groups. Huh. Oh, we forgot to match the no the no bag situation. Um, that's what we messed up. So the no bag, no, no other bags, no other bags. So it either contains this, um, Let's, we can just make it, we can just, this is sort of, I'd rather, I was thinking to do it nicely in the regex, but we can do it in a fancy, uh, in, a, in a less fancy, but easier way. We can just say, um, uh, we can just make a regex for detecting that, right? So it's the no inner regex. Uh, it starts with no other. Well, it's just, it's exactly equal to no other bags. Actually, we don't even need a regex. We can just say, it's always going to be no other bags, period. So we can just say um, if inner bag string uh, equal to no other bags, period, then um, If it's equal to, where'd it go? There it is. Then inner bags. Uh, oh, no, we can just say if inner is not equal, do all this. Oh, if inner string, there we go. Cool. All right. So rules uh, dot item. Uh, let's just do rules. Rules dot keys zero. Rules dot keys. It's not subscriptable. Why not? <laughs> what the hell type is rules.keys that I can't do this? Dict keys? Is dict keys just like some useless uh, thing? It's a list of uh, tuples. All right, what can I do to a dict keys? Der. Nothing? <laughs> Okay, well, useless thing that is. Um, whatever, we'll just do uh, here. We'll do x for um, uh, x comma y. Oh, we'll just do key for key val in uh, rules.items. Zero. There you go. Mirrored silver. Terrific. Um, let's pick like a hundred or something. Sure. All right. Rules. 
uh, shiny black. So the shiny black rule is that we have five faded gold and one bright tomato. And we have the no quantity rules because we don't, right? Uh, what did I call it? Rules no quantity. I got it backwards. All right? And the rules with no quantity, faded gold, bright tomato inside of shiny black. Great. All right. So now we can use, we're going to, we're going to, um, um, Part one result equals find containing bag um, rules no quantity uh, oh, bag type and then also the rules. I guess it should be rules and then the bag. Let's do rules bag. Rules and then the problem was shiny gold, I believe. Shiny gold. Shiny gold. That's our part one result. Print part one result. Great. All right, now we have to do a recursion here. Um, So I didn't really make a very recursive structure. Um, I could try to develop a recursive structure from the top down, some sort of tree, or I could just loop over this dictionary iteratively, which is easier with the data structure that it's in. Um, do I try to build a tree to get the easy answer? Right. If I build a tree, um, hmm, is there an easy tree I can get to to do this with? It's obviously a tree problem. I can make a tree class. I could do that, um, and build it up. So I think that making the tree is the right way to do this, right? Um, but if there isn't like already a tree library, I think it's going to be faster to do this um, iteratively. Um, so we're just going to do the iterative, not fancy solution instead of the tree solution, okay? All right, so... Um, we're going to do a bright white bag can only hold a shiny gold. All right. So we're going to basically scan the whole dictionary. We're going to find any bag that can contain shiny gold, right? Going to add those to the list. Um, then we're going to scan for each of those, right? We're going to recursively do it again. So actually what we want is we want this to be, we're, we can still do recursion here. Uh, bag types, All right? So we're going to only search for one, like this. Um, so uh, we're going to do count containing bags. All right, we're going to change this. Count containing bags. Okay, so we're going to say... Um, uh, four bag in bag types, four, um, uh, for each bag in bag types, for outer bag, inner bag in rules.items. Right? Hmm. 
Her outer bag, inner bag, and rules dot items. Um, if bag in outer bag inner bags. If bag is in inner bags for each right bag count plus equals one. It's not recursive, though. So we've counted how many bags. Oh, bag count equals uh, plus equals one, but also uh, outer bags plus equals outer bag. And then bag count plus equals count containing bags. Oh, we can just remove that back count. Uh, count containing bags. Oh, no. I don't know about the plus one yet. We'll see. Uh, I don't think we need it yet. Hold on. Right. So we just found all the outer bags that contain the bags we're looking for. For each, for each bag that we're looking for, find Make a list of out of bags that immediately contain that bag. So that's this. Okay, so we've made a list of bags that immediately contain that one, right? And then our bag count is going to be equal to count containing bags rules uh, outer bags plus the length of the outer bags because we're the number of bags that can eventually contain at least one shiny gold is four, right? The shiny gold itself doesn't count as being able to contain a shiny gold. So it right, so we only care about counting outer bags. We don't need to count that final inner inner single bag, the shiny gold itself. Um, or if we're coming in with some new bag types to search for recursively, we don't want to count them twice. Right, so this is, we're basically only counting these outer bags here. Return bag count. All right, so I hope this recursion, Python has a recursion limit. I hope this works. We're going to just try it and see what happens. Somehow that worked. Oh, wait. Uh, is our breakpoint? Oh, no. Uh, oh, we have this breakpoint here. We didn't actually do it yet. Oh, part. One result. 14? That seems small. That seems small. I'm not going to type that in, although it could be the correct answer. <laughs> um, let's do some debuggage. Cool. Okay. Uh, next line. So bag. We're looking for shiny gold. Terrific. Bag types. Oh. Oh, wait. Rules. There's our rules. Great. Um, uh, okay. Next. Let's look at the listing. Uh, where are we? What? What? Bag. Bag types. I don't know what line we're on. Help. Did the debugger like lose itself? Let's try it again. For bag and bag types. Next, outer bags. Terrific. For outer bag, inner bag, and rules.items. 
If bag and inner bags. Bag in inner bags? No. The inner bags does not have a, right? Um, all right. Oh, so basically we're only doing anything inside the loop if bag in inner bags. Oops. False. All right, continue. All right, so we came up here again. Uh, bag, oh, bag types. Ah, this is why we found a bug. It's not adding um, when it's adding to the outer bags to list. It's breaking apart the types. It's not keeping them as tuples. Um, so we need to do outer bags dot uh, append. All right, let's try this again. Okay, bag types, much better. All right, so let's remove our breakpoint here and see what number we get. Part one result, 625. This feels like it could be a right answer and I'm gonna type it in. It's not the right answer, it's too high. Okay. Please wait one minute before trying again, that's fine. Too high, too high. All right, let's figure out why we're too high. Let's figure out how many lines are in the file first. Length of input.txt. Oh. 594 lines in the file. So, uh, clearly, oh, so um, assert bag count is less than, uh, the length of the rules. I figured out why. We're not removing duplicate bags. So a bag could contain, for example, you could have a blue bag, and the blue bag contains shiny gold and red. And then red could contain blue. And now you would count, you would double count some of these, right? We need we need to remove the unique ones. Um and this might harm our uh, recursive situation. So, um, I think we're gonna do it in a non-recursive, sad kind of way, but it, I think this one will work better. First of all, we're gonna, um, I wanna see if you can do a length of a dictionary first. I'm pretty sure you can, I just wanna verify. You can, so we're gonna assert that our bag count has to be less than or equal to the length of the rules, right? Uh, before you return it. Um, so we won't make a mistake like that again. We know that we can't have a number that big. Um, right? Okay, so here's how we're gonna do this. No recursion. Sorry, recursion, you're too cool. Uh, no tree, also a good way to do this. Sorry, no tree. Um, we're going to do um, uh, containing bags. Um, right. So we should... Hmm, maybe this does have to be recursive still. Maybe not. So we have to prime it first. So the way we're gonna prime it, yeah, I think recursive would be the clean way, but I, I don't have time for that, to think about that right now. It's already nine o'clock. So we're just gonna do uh, a simple, 
Uh, four bag in bag types. We'll just delete all this. Um, four bag and bag types for, uh, let's actually get back our rule iterator. There we go. Yes, for outer bag, inner bag, and rules that items if the bag is in the inner bags. Then, um, containing containing bags, uh, outer bag equals none. Mm -hmm. Great point. All right, so um, here we go. Our bag count should be like a few. Oh, it's not defined yet. Okay, containing bags. So these are the bags that directly contain um, the um, shiny gold bag, right? Um, so that's like our bottom our bottom layer. Uh, and then what we're going to do is um, we can use set default. Python set default. Yep, I think that's going to work. At this point, I feel like I'm sort of building the tree. <laughs> it's the tree answer, but, you know. Okay, set outer bag, false. Terrific, okay. Um, right, still the length of the containing bags. Okay, so now we're gonna say while, um, while containing bags dot values, uh, while there's a false in there. Well, false in. Containing bags dot values. Um, for. Oh, same thing. Right. Well, if for each outer bag in the inner bag, this is getting recursive again, though. Um, I think we can still do this recursively, though. Let's go to our old answer that got the 600 whatever. OK. And instead of doing this bag count like this, right? We'll do um, just the outer bags, right? 
Oh no, Outer Banks is in there. Um, oh, we've already built the Outer Bags here. Oh wait, did we delete the recursive part? Oh, here's the recursive part. So, um, well, instead of count containing bags, we'll do get containing bags. All right. Um. All right, so we're going to add all the outer bags. And then, once we've gotten all the outer bags, we're going to add the other outer bags. The outer bags will add to themselves. Their own containing bags. Let's see what happens with this recursion, actually. Uh oh, we got a parentheses messed up somewhere down there. Right there, found it. Okay, so this assertion's wrong here now. Okay, nope. Outer bags referenced before assignment. Oh, because it's in here. If it's in the inner bag, we're going to do this. Hold on. If the bag is inside the other bag, we're going to add that outer bag to the list, and then we're going to add any bags containing that bag to the list. Get containing bags for We don't need bag types. We can just do bag type. That was doing that was throwing me off a little bit. We can just do this. Okay.
bag. Okay, so if the bag, we're going to go through the whole set of bags. If the bag is in a bag, we find a bag that contains it, we're going to add that containing bag to our outer bags. And then we're going to add everything that contains that outer bag to our outer bags, right? And then we're going to return, we're going to make a, use a set to remove duplicate bags. Oh. And then down here, we'll remove this breakpoint now. We'll remove duplicate bags that way. Um, yeah. Nope. Unhashable type in the set. Well, that didn't work. <laughs> um, there we go. Oh, I see. Because we're we have to return. Um, we have to return outer bags, or it's not going to recurse properly. Oh no, it's not going to work that way either. Because um. Right, outer bags is a list. So outer bags is a list, right? So if we start out with outer bags like zero, right? OB equals outer bags, um, OB. We start out with something like this, right? And we do like dot append, right? Let's add a two to the list. Okay, that works, right? But if we do ob dot append ob, right? Well, now we've got a list in our list. We don't want that. We want to want to bust them out into the into a big list. So we actually do ob. Let's do ob equals ob uh, colon to the. Okay, uh, we want ob plus equals like three four, and that will do it. So we don't we want this to be plus equals. So we're um, yeah, that's what we want. So that'll combine the items into the single list. Oops. Cool. 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 Yep. Okay. Um, it seems like it's working somewhat correctly. Okay. So let's go down to this big uh, breakpoint here. Yep. Part one result. Some giant list of bags. So this should be six something, but a set int is not iter. Oh, because they have the length there. That's why. It's only two fifty nine. So let's do this. Okay, um, so I correctly identified the problem was the duplicate bags coming up in the recursion because there was no guarantees that this had to be a straight tree, right, with one bag to rule them all like the one ring, 
Um, you know, bags could contain bags in looping, circular fashions, right? So you could find a parent of a bag is then a child of a bag you've been to and becomes another parent and gets added again. So this is a cheaty way, I think, of getting the right answer. It could be still be a wrong answer, but it feels feels good. So let's try 259. That's the right answer. That's the right answer. That took me how long, right? An hour? Fantastic. Uh, but unlike um, a couple days ago, we were struggling for an hour. We were moving for this hour. Okay. Part two. Here we go. It's getting pretty expensive to fly these days, not because of ticket prices, because the ridiculous number of bags. Because <laughs> they're getting shiny gold bags in it. Faded blue contains zero. Dotted black contains zero. Vibrant plum bags contain 11, five faded blue and six black. Dark olive contains seven, three faded blue and four. Okay. The quantities are coming into play now. A single shiny gold bag must contain one dark olive and the seven plus two plum and the 11. Right? Um, 32 bags. Yeah, so a single shiny gold bag must contain, right, recursive down this many bags. Okay, the actual rules have a small chance of going several levels deeper than this example. They sure do. Count all the bags. Even if the nesting becomes topologically impractical. Here's another example. Shiny gold contains two. Duh, 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 and this shiny gold must contain 126 other bags. How many bags are required inside your shiny gold bag? So this is reverse. Uh, we're starting with shiny gold bag. We're seeing what it contains, right? And then we're going downwards um, recursively. So this actually feels a little bit easier. Uh, it's uh, get, oh, it's uh, count contained bags, rules bag. Um, so the part two bags is going, to, oh, the part two result. <laughs> is going to be equal to um, get contained bag, oh, count contained bags, we're counting now. Uh, and these is going to be the regular rules, not the no quantity rules, uh, followed by the bag. It's, it's always shiny gold, so. Uh, part two, Oop. part two. Okay, so what I think I'm actually gonna do is redo the quantity section a little bit. Um, here's the no quantity inner bags, but the All right, the inner bags just we're getting the uh, the parsed inner bag. I don't think we want that. I think what we want is um, we want to split out that quantity, which is actually the first item. is It's quantity followed by the bag, so it's going to be. I guess it'll actually be another dictionary and not another and not a list. And the quantity will be on the, the, the value, right? So it'll be inner bags. Groups. Inner bag. There's no inner. Quantity equals. Uh, 
like that. Well, actually, we can just do quantity uh, adjective color equals parsed inner bag. And then we can say inner bag equals adjective color. All right, this is easier to read. Um, no quantity inner bags. We're just going to append the inner bag. And for the quantity inner bags, which are a dictionary, it's going to be quantity inner bags, inner bag equals quantity. Oh, parsed rules, outer bag equals Yes. All right, let's just take a look at what those uh, that data looks like here. So part one still printed out the right answer. That's nice. Rules. Rules.items zero. Rules.items. Uh... So we'll look at the mirrored silver bag again. And we can see, yes, the mirrored silver bag now contains wavy gray bags, four of them. We need to turn the quantity into an integer. Okay. Um, let's just do this for outer, inner, in rules that items. Outer, inner. Next, I'll continue. Outer, inner. Bright purple five, pale black one, muted line five. Cool. So, oops, <laughs> go back. Continue to part two. Okay. So, single shiny gold bag must contain. All right. So, we're going to say until we get one with, with nothing, we're going to return. Um, A bag that can contain no other bags will return a zero. So, We're going to start with um, the count is going to equal um, current rule equals rules bag, right? And then the count is going, so then we've got the... Um, is rules bag. So the current rule, so it's the sum of the current rule dot values. It's going to be how many bags are directly underneath the current bag, right? Um, so 
if the current bag contains like you know four two and one this will return this will be seven the sum of the current values will be seven so immediate count equals this oh, bag count equals zero Right, and then the question is, how many bags do those contain? So, uh, for rule in, um, so for bag quantity in the current rule, we are going to bag count plus equals. I'll return bag count. You're going to equal the get containing bags for the rules and the bag, right? Multiplied by the quantity. Immediate count is never used. Ah, bag count plus equals. All right, so how many bags does this bag contain? Do we have to include the bag itself? A shiny bag gold must contain one dark olive and the seven within it, which is eight and two plum, right? Um, right, one times, oh, one plus one times seven plus two plum bags plus the 11, perfect. So that's what we're doing. We're saying, uh, the sum of all the bags, the sum of current rule that values, we're, that is going to give you this one and this two and all the, the non-multiply ones all at once, right? So it's going to give you the one and the two, so to get you to the three. And then this loop is going to get you all the multiply ones, one times seven, two times 11, and so forth. Okay? All right? The sum of the current immediate children, and then for each of those children, right? Now there are count them get containing bags times the number of those bags add that up return this and then recursion here on get containing bags i am moderately confident in this answer did i edit the wrong i edited the part one All right, let's copy and paste this somewhere else. Oops. Let's go back. I should have done some git commits along the way. That was really the mistake. Oops. Let's go back. <laughs> I don't want to lose the part. I should really commit after part one from now on. Oh, but this is when I'm editing the parse input files. So we want to keep those changes. Did I just obliterate my, oh no, I think this is right now. Yeah, this is this is still the part one. We'll go down to the part two here. Boom. All right, let's run. Let's run this. Okay, so part one is still right, part two fails, cool. Did we lose our int on the quantity? Yep, we lost the int on the quantity.
Mm. Can't multiply sequence by non-int of type string. All right, well, let's figure this out. So part one's still working, so that's fine. Cool. So our bag count is our bag count is zero. Okay. What's our current rule? The current rule is that clear chartreuse bags. We have two of them. Uh, oh no. The current rule is that shiny gold bags contain two clear chartreuse bags. That's the current rule. Okay. Uh, next. So our bag count should not be two. Yes. The the we're only contained two clear chartreuse bags. Okay, so then, um, bag, ah, this is why. Bag quantity in current rule, right? It's current rule dot items. That's why. Let's just do, let's just de debug one more time. Next, 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 okay bag quantity there we go all right let's remove the breakpoint okay uh, unsupported int and list oh so it's not get containing bags it's <laughs> count contained bags we're recursing to the other function that's a mistake uh let's try it again 45018 Hmm. Do we trust this answer? Do we trust it? Ooh, spicy. We're typing it in. Spicy. 45018. Uh, 45018. That's the right answer. We got it. Recursion, second way, easier. Seems like the uh, part two, a little easier. Um than the part one, right? The part two is just a straight recursion. I think using integers really helped on part two. You're just adding and adding and adding. Um, part one, I guess you would have been do, uh, nicer with a tree, right? We could have built a tree. Um, actually, you know, the tree would have really, I think was the right answer. It would have solved both the weighted tree because you could have built the tree of all bags, right? But I guess it's, I guess it, because they can loop around into a graph, um, it's not really just a straight tree, right? Um, but you could put weights on all the weighted graph and then just answer all possible questions from like a weighted graph like that. But recursion, I think, is how you're, you're, even if you build that advanced data structure, allowing you to do many more queries more easily, uh, you're going to be recursing when you search it no matter what. So, um... Yeah, recursion is what we we ended up doing, um, and that's you know that that's what you had. To, that's really what was absolutely the puzzle made recursion absolutely necessary. Um, but the making an advanced data structure from the input was sort of maybe necessary. You know, I just used I, I'm using Python, right? So everything wants to be a list or a dictionary in Python, so that's what I end up doing a lot. Um, we did build a somewhat nice structure, though, for the uh, quantity, right, where we were, had dictionaries. Um, and the other thing that was super important to this, well, actually, it ended up not being important. Um, I thought it was going to be important, and it wasn't, was the separation of the adjective uh, from the color, pale maroon, dotted orange, right? Is I was using, for keys on my dictionaries, I was using tuples. Um, so I would have been, if they had asked me in part two to say, find all the green bags, I don't care if they're dotted or, or whatever, I would have been able to do that very easily um, because I was keeping those two values separate. But the problem ended up being such that I actually could have just here, just made a string, just the string. Um, but yeah, you can use a multi-part, a tuple as a key in a Python dictionary. Um, but you can't use a list or another dictionary as a key in a dictionary. It has to be a hashable um, object, so an integer, a string, um, a tuple, right? A tuple is, is locked in. It's immutable. 
so you can use it as as long as nothing in the tuple is um you know mutable or whatever i don't even think you can do that right can't i don't think it's legal right um all right well can you do um yeah unhashable typed dict so the tuple itself is hashable and it's going to it'll try to let you use it as a key but when it goes down into here it's going to say hey this thing in the tuple is not hashable oh no one can see that oh yeah you can see it <laughs> uh, i forgot to switch back to webcam view <laughs> okay um back to webcam view <laughs> okay uh, the only thing we messed up in this video was that you couldn't really see my face when I was giving that final explanation at the end or see my awesome reaction of being happy that I got the right answer. But there you have it. Uh, Advent of Code Day 7 is complete. Took about an hour and a half. Um, and it, there wasn't a lot of struggling like there was unnecessarily. This was about as long as this kind of thing would take normally. Um, we didn't really get caught on anything difficult, right? We were progressing the whole time, moving smoothly, um, solving the problem, not solving other outside issues, um, anything like that. Um, so yeah, I expect the future to take about this long and that makes me kind of not want to upload them to YouTube because they're so long. Um, but I'll probably keep streaming them, right? That's a lot. I think it's lower effort. Um, well, maybe I will still YouTube. Who knows? Let me know, right? If you're watching these on YouTube, if you care. Um, you know, there are Twitch VODs, I guess, right? Um, so yeah, that is Advent of Code Day 7. Remember, I am uploading all the code for all of my solutions to my GitHub. That link is in the description. The link to Advent of Code itself is in the description as well. And if you're on YouTube, of course. And we are streaming these live at unannounced times, basically whenever I get around to doing it during, you know, probably usually in the evening, after work, after whatever else I'm doing after work, like podcasting and such. So... Um, if you want to see it live, this is the place to be. Um, I'll put the, I'll, you know, I'll put the link to my Twitch also in the YouTube description because I haven't, I haven't done that previously in case anybody, uh, doesn't know it. You can, you can figure it out, I think. Uh, so yeah, that's about it. And I will see you next time, probably for day eight tomorrow. Mm.